What's up, everybody? I'm David Hain, and I'd like to welcome you to episode 11 of the A to D from Addict to Disciple podcast. The idea of four seasons in one day comes from a description of both Melbourne, Australia, and Cape Town, South Africa, where the weather changes dramatically and often without any warning from a sunny, wonderful summer day to a cold, wintry, bone-chilling rainy day. In today's episode, we're going to look at the four seasons in one day aspect as it applies to addiction as we look at one day in the life of an addict. I'll be interviewing a good friend, Bobby, from St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada, who struggles with cocaine addiction and admitted his last use was two days before this interview. I sent him a picture of a piece of artwork made by Lancaster, Pennsylvania artist Freeman Stoltzfus, which he calls Seasons. I've posted this picture on my Instagram page. Check it out at David from A to D. The picture shows a wooded area where the trees are pictured in four seasons from left to right, spring, summer, fall, and winter, and at the same time, spring is at daybreak, summer in the middle of the day, fall is at dusk or early evening, and winter is in the dark of the night. I hope you enjoy this informative and emotional time as my friend shares his heart. Welcome, Bobby. The phrase four seasons in one day for those two cities implies rapid, unpredictable change at any moment, being prepared for anything, having a backup plan, and that this wasn't what I expected today to be. How do you feel that that description would be an accurate description of a day in your life? Well, it's, it's pretty accurate the way they say it. And I, I thought about this last night. I was talking to a friend about the Four Seasons. And, um, I, you know, it made sense to me. Uh, yeah, I could see doing Four Seasons in one day, right? Like, uh, no problem. Like, you know, in the morning, a uh, nice spring day. You know, uh, uh, afternoon comes around, you know, and it's getting a little bit warmer, uh, like, uh, uh, summertime's coming up, and then supper time is around fall, getting a little bit slower. So you know, winter and hey, right, and it's a vicious, vicious cycle. Like to do all that, you know, that's that's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, what's your worst time of the day? Uh, nighttime is my worst. Uh, I'm. A morning person. I like to do things. Uh, you know, um, I'm not the type of person that just sits at home and does drugs, right? I do dope and then I go out or do, you know, I, I, I say I do the hustle. That's what I call it. It's a, a hustle. Sometimes it's an honest hustle. Sometimes it's not. So what sort of thoughts go through your mind as sunset begins and dusk settles in and you know the night time's coming um i start thinking the bad shit that i've done during the day you know um who i hurt why i did it try to reason with it trying to make it better trying to make it okay that it was justified and uh, I know, truthfully, it's all bullshit. It's a devil working, smiling like hell, right? And uh, that's when I start, you know, thinking about all the stuff I've done during the day to do my, my hustle. Most of it's not honest, right? Some sort yeah. of hustle. And, uh, you know, That's when you know it, it gets bad at night time for me. It does, anyways, because I got too much time to myself and I think too much. And then, you know, I do. I do have a conscience. That's one good thing about me. I think, you know, it's 
sure I, I have an addiction, but I do have a conscience. And it, it works. Yeah, that's a, a key piece of information for our listeners out there. Too often people will look at people who are still active in their addiction and assume they don't have a conscience, that they're totally self-centered and selfish and they don't care about anybody else. Right. And, really, and, you know, really, yeah. you're right there. And I, I, but, you know, I, I can see why they think that because, you know, 80% of the addicts out there are don't have a conscience. You know, they're, I never thought I'd say something like this, you know, this, this one addict, you know, making addicts look bad. <laughs> like, how can you make an addict look good? You know, but. Yeah. <laughs> okay, the next part I'd like to talk about, a band from Melbourne, Australia, named Crowded House, recorded a song called Four Seasons in One Day in 1992. And I'd like to just share a verse of that with you and then get your feedback. Okay. They wrote, it doesn't pay to make predictions sleeping in an unmade bed. Finding out wherever there is comfort, there is pain only one step away, like four seasons in one day. So what do you think of when you hear those lyrics? Well, when, when I hear them, uh, the first thing I think about is homelessness. That's it. it when I read that or I, I, I hear that, uh, uh, first thing I think of is homelessness. Uh, like, you know, sleeping in an unmade bed. Like when you're homeless, you don't really have a bed. It's never made. Right? You got to be ready to go at all times. You know, you never know what's going to happen. Uh, you know, and same with the, the making a prediction. When you're homeless, you know, you can't make predictions on anything during the day because you, know, you try to make a plan and the plan doesn't come true. You know, try to stick to a time, time phrase when you're homeless. And it very rarely works the way you want it to. You know, the end effect is usually the same. You get what you need or want, but sometimes you have to do different things to do that, and it's not your plan on doing that. You know, and I could see me doing four seasons in one day, like you know, with like I said earlier, with how you feel, and by nighttime it's you know brutal winter up here in Canada. It's cold, and you know, imagine being homeless when it's minus 40 degrees and it's your cho your choice to be homeless. How, how, you know, how wrong is that? You know, I didn't, I'm trying to find the right word and not, so I just, <laughs> wrong. But, uh, you know, it's your choice to be homeless and when it's minus 40. You know, that's, uh, yeah, that's, a, that's a piece. That's pretty sad to me. It is. It's, it's, uh, you know, it's it's sad. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can I can hear the sadness in your voice just reflecting on on saying, you know, this is the cycle you're caught in. You use that that word earlier, getting caught in the cycle. And it reminds me of the the Bill Murray movie Groundhog Day, <laughs> where he portrayed a weatherman named Phil Collins stuck in a town in Pennsylvania to report on Groundhog Day and how the groundhog would give a prediction of when winter would end. And in the movie, Bill Murray got caught up in the never ending cycle because every morning when he woke up, it was Groundhog Day all over again. It never went to the next day in February. And finally, he said in the movie, you want a prediction about the weather? You're asking the wrong Phil. And the groundhog's name was Phil. I'm going to give you a prediction about this winter. It's going to be cold. It's going to be dark. And it's going to last the rest of your lives. 
and you've spoken the first two of those. It's going to be dark and it's going to be cold, especially up there in Canada. <laughs> I think that's the truth. But how do you how do you handle that thought or that fear that this could last the rest of your life and you don't really want it to? It's a tough one you know, when you phrase it like that. That's pretty deep um, to me. Um, to be honest about that, I struggle with that almost every day, whether to stop doing dope or not. Most of the time, when when I say I'm going to stop, I know, I know I'm not going to, it's, if I want to stop doing drugs, I have to do, I have to change everything I do, everything I think, everybody I know. It's a big commitment to be happy, you know, um. I, I'm not gonna. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm not gonna give up on trying to stay clean, right? So, you know, I I have it in me to fight to always get up and do it again, and do it right this time, you know, by not doing drugs or choosing to do it, you know. So, but the cycle is. Vicious, and you know, like in the last year when I've been homeless, I've seen so much stuff that shocked me. I never thought I'd be shocked so much. I've seen a lot in my lifetime, but on the streets, just in the little sink out in that near Niagara, it's it's amazing how some of the people in the attics. Are treated and treat people. I'm, I'm amazed. You know, I'm proud sometimes, but I'm sad a lot. Mad, really mad a lot. Anger and violence is a everyday occurrence with me usually. You know, so you know, I don't know how to. I don't know if I want to get out of that cycle. Yeah, I hear your struggle, Bobby, and I count you as a, a dear friend. We don't know each other very long and, and haven't spent a lot of time together, but I appreciate your openness and just the, the caring that you show to me, to your friends up there in St. Catharines, and I appreciate your consistency of commitment to say, even in the midst of this struggle, I'm going to do what I can to stay connected to people who show care and show love to me. Yeah, what's your what's your motivation for keeping coming back and staying connected? Um, what are you reaching out for in friendships with people like myself and and your other friends that you know really love you and really care about you up in St. Catharines. Like, I'm just born to fight. I'm not going to give up and be controlled by, uh, you know, um, so I'm not going to be controlled by it. It's not going to control my day all the time. That is my motivation to be a better person, you know, who wants to grow up to be a junkie? You don't ever hear that. You know, what do you want to be when you grow up? You know, everybody says police officer, lawyer, doctor. And there's one guy in the corner, he says, I'm going to be a junkie. And you see him running from the police. And that's how he turns out, you know. That's part of life. That's the life that I don't want, though. That motivates me to stay 
on a better path with the right people. You know, you people, places, and things. It means so much to uh, my recovery. And I have to stay focused. You know, I don't know how to uh, go on without the right people. I couldn't, I couldn't really go on. It, I would torture myself. It, it's too, too much. And uh, you got to have the right people in the corner. It took me a long time to get the right people and to accept the help that they offer. You know, not just them offering it. I have to accept it and, you know, be happy with it. You know, it's like, you know, that lifestyle is brutal. I don't wish it on nobody. It's bad. Wow. That was a powerful interview. Thank you so much, Bobby, for sharing your heart. And thank each of you for listening in. I know you all have at least 10 friends or family members who would benefit from hearing this. So please share and encourage them to share with their friends. I put a link in the description to this podcast for Freeman Stoltzfus Art Gallery. So if you want to see more of his art, please check on his website. And I look forward to having you back next week for the next episode of the A to D from Addict to Disciple podcast. I'd like to close with the words that Bobby gave me in closing. Stay safe and stay strong.